Big gram in there. Oh, fishy. Yep, fish. Uh -huh. It's indigenous. It's indigenous. It's indigenous. It's indigenous.
Discovery River. It's Mickey and his pals. In honor of our Earth Day celebration, look who's making a special surprise visit. Say hello to our brother Bear. Glamour shot. Oh, wait, wait, there's another one coming. <laughs> hey, a monkey. Right here. You can I'll let them know they record.
Street has developed some amazing camouflage techniques to try and hide from predators. As we head on in, you can look out for any kind of shape, any kind of movement, anything that might indicate there are animals around. And actually, if you look over there to the right, behind that first clump of bamboo in the top right corner, there is an okapi over there. Very shy, very reclusive, and very good at hiding. And then in the bottom left corner of that same clearing, you may see a dark animal with a yellow stripe down its back, all curled up in between the rocks and the bamboo. But that is a yellow back diker, also known as a diving buck due to how she acts when she's startled. So I'll uh, out a really loud squeal, lift the yellow part along her back like a flag, and then dive into the bushes at high speeds to get away. And it seems like bushes are the places to be. Because if you look over here to the right, there's a reddish brown animal with horns and stripes. This is a bongo. Bongo are also very shy, also very reclusive, known for moving very quietly, very quickly through the forest, which has earned the nickname the Ghost of the Woods. Oh, but I do see an animal that needs no stripes coming up ahead. Again, it's going to be over here on the hill to the left, kind of standing back behind the rocks. Absolutely massive animal capable of reaching weights of up to 3,000 pounds. And as you can imagine, something big, that big, has very little to worry about when it comes to predators in the wild. In fact, the biggest threat to uh, these bongos over here. And if you notice that really dark bongo over there to the right, that is probably a male bongo. You know, the thing about bongos is that the males will get a little bit bigger than the females, as well as they get a little bit of a darker red in coloration as they get older. And switching back over here to the left, these black and white birds here in the clearing, these are saddle bow storks. And don't you guys be fooled, they're actually pretty big. They stand around five feet tall, with a wingspan that reaches up to nine feet across. But I do want to take us deeper into the reserve, now down to the soft air. If you look over here to the right, I was going to say they're going to be in the water, but we're actually going to glimpse of a hippo that's out of the water. You're going to have to look in the very far back, back behind the trunk even. Uh, that is a hippo, and that's actually pretty rare to see a hippo out of the water, even if it's just a glimpse. Hippos do have pretty sensitive skin, so if they're out in the sun for too long, they run the chance of getting sunburned. That was actually pretty cool, and hopefully you guys got to see how big the hippo is, kind of how it's shaped. Nostrils, eyes, and ears. There's another one over here to the left, or out the very top of their heads which allows them to stay mostly submerged and only poke up their heads whenever they need to take a breath or see what's going on above the water. And hanging out with the hippos, the gray birds there on the island, those are pink bats. Seems to be quite a few of them over there. And those Nile crocodile are the largest species of crocodilian in Africa, capable of reaching lakes of around 16 feet on average. We're going to talk about every single one of them, Coley. And Coley are one of the only domesticated animals here on the reserve, also called Watusi cattle, after people that first domesticated them. And those impressive horns that they have on their heads can actually reach lengths of up to 8 feet long. And we'll talk about the zebra in just a moment. I do want to focus on the Tower of Giraffe out here now, because there is a baby giraffe standing right beside an adult over there to the right. And she is baby baby. She's only around five or six months old. While she may look small compared to the adult over there, she's still probably taller than all of us here in the truck. Because when little giraffes are born, they are around six feet tall. And giraffe mothers give birth standing up. So those six foot tall babies have a six foot tall drop. That's their first instruction into the world. Hanging out in the shade under the tree. Now those are African painted dogs over there. And look for those spots because the painted dogs do get their name from the beautiful spots they have. Them dogs. Those spots are unique and vary from individual dog to individual dog. Well, While furry. they may look very similar to hyenas, they're actually not really related to hyenas at all. Hyenas have their own family called Hyena Day. While those painted dogs are related to dogs. And if you keep looking over here to the left, these gray animals that are kind of back there by the tree line, those are wildebeest. Now this is actually a pretty small herd of wildebeest, considering they can have some of the largest migratory herds in the world. Look at but those migratory herds able to number up to 1.5 million individuals. So we'll keep on moving through. We'll see some more giraffes that are in that tower over there. And I do actually want to keep bringing us towards 
towards some zebra because there's also a small dazzle of Hartman Mountain zebra out here. And there's a couple of ways to tell they are Hartmans. For one, they're the only species of zebra that have a dewlap under their neck with an extra fold of skin that serves to cool them down. They also have thicker stripes going down their back heading towards their hindquarters. In comparison to their size, they have really tiny hooves, which helps them in climbing up hills or, as the name suggests, mountains. And a pretty neat thing about zebra is that every single zebra that you see in a dazzle, even if you see 50 zebras in a dazzle of zebras, they all have unique striping patterns. Actually, the young zebras, the babies, will actually memorize their mother's striping pattern the baby. and only drink from her out of all the other mares that are in the herd. And once more, another giraffe over here to the right. And it kind of puts the giraffe into a bit of perspective. Your armrests are about six feet off the ground here in this truck. And these giraffes still tower over the very top of our canopies when they get right next to us. I do see some more Ancoli cattle here to the left and the right. And right as well near the top of the hill, there's actually going to be two Patterson's Eland up there. The male is the gray one, the female is the light brown one. And they are the largest species of antelope in the world. They stand around six feet tall, and are we down there beside them, Eland, they would have no problems jumping straight over our heads. And they can actually leap up to eight feet from a standing position. So they are pretty athletic animals. Thanks. Thanks. Looks like he has a flower crown over there on his head. Believe it or not, that actually is attractive to the female Elans. He'll make it smell like him and then he'll wear it around. So when you see him wearing a flower crown, he is trying to get that lady's attention. Oh, but I do see something even it's bigger of an elephant by looking at the shape of their ears. Ears kind of look like the continent of Africa, which for me at least is the easiest way to tell between an African elephant and an Asian elephant. Now, it does seem like there's a herd in the area, and the thing about elephants is that they'll actually separate into different herds depending on whether they are male elephants or female elephants. So female elephants and their offspring will hang out in the much larger herds called the matriarchal herds, which are led by the oldest female elephant, also known as the matriarch. Species of flamingo in the world, as well as the lightest pink in coloration. What a pretty. But with flamingo, they actually don't start out that pink color. Does anyone know where they get it from? Look at that, there's a baby over there to the right as well, underneath the tree. On the other side of Mama, now we need to all remain completely seated, even though we're going slow just for everyone's safety. And we'll get a better look at the baby in just a moment, but he is baby baby. He's only around four months old. I know, he's huge though. He's almost around 1,000 pounds. Really neat to see. But besides the rhinos, I'm not seeing too much small animal activity around here. And there could be a reason for that. You see, this is also big hairs and long distance runners. They are also diurnal hunters, which means they will hunt primarily during the day. But that cut one's got him in a whole lot of trouble. So these are actually ladies. You can tell by looking at the color of their feathers. The males will tend to be really striking black in coloration with a white ruff around their collar. Well, the females are that one as well. They do have two sets of tusks. Upper tusk bigger used for digging. While the bottom are razor sharp because they require less space and food than other livestock animals such as cattle. And their milk is actually highly valuable. It's very sweet and very nutritious. I'm not a big fan of this part. Probably the worst thing I've ever done in my life. The lines are at least two hours long uh, for everything. So, uh, but that's the full video. Maybe it was just the day to day. So, thank you. Make sure to like and subscribe. Have a good day.